So that big stadium behind you that you can see right now is the O2 Arena. For those that don't know, this is actually the biggest concert venue arena in the whole of Europe, like music concert venue in the whole of Europe. Um, and so for me to have sold it out is absolutely incredible as a British rapper. It's the biggest project we've ever done by far. I still can't believe it. I don't know how I'm going to react. I've tried my best not to think about it so much. Obviously living right put right next to it doesn't really help. Yeah, man, I'm just I'm just, just trying to meditate a little bit and just let it all sink in, you know? Just ringing up all the MCs, making sure everyone's down there. It's not always the easiest thing to do. London is so important on so many levels. And obviously, not only that, that's our, our hometown, the city where we were born and raised, where our friends and family are, where our peoples are, where we make our money, where we went to school. It's our history, you know, and, and not only that, our company's called Disturbing London, so everything, Chinese music, the venue, the massive after party, we're just literally disturbing London. The type of people that we are, and of course, it's a natural thing. Like, I will call all of these people and cordially invite everybody, but as someone was saying to me on the phone, oh, what, where are you performing? And like, sometimes when, when I hear that, it's like, oh, like, why am I gonna, oh, the O2, oh, where's the O2? Like, like, come on, so there's still very much like that whole ego thing, but I always just try and shut that down by being a bigger person and reaching out and ringing and whatever. I need to take a picture of this shit, man. This is crazy. Someone needs to get some pictures of that. I was 11 when the O2 was first made as the Millennium Dome, and I went there as a little kid. And I was selected as one of the like five pupils from my class to go there and see all the stuff inside the inside the um, venue. And then after a couple of years, it was bought over by another company and turned into a music concert venue. And everybody's played in there. You know, some of the biggest and the best act. We went to see Kanye do his um, Glow in the Dark tour there. Massive show, you know, we were just in the office from the studio, he was on, we looked out the, uh, the window and we saw, we were like, Kanye's across there, let's go. So we cut the session and just went down. Can you imagine, we were no VIP, we had nosebleed seats, just watching to, watching Kanye, he's like an ant. Yeah, after Kanye, we were just like, you know what? Uh, when you sell this out, it's gonna be amazing. Imagine like all your friends and family, everyone coming down and watching you perform in the, in the O2. Like, so that's why it's just, it's crazy, man. Two years later, T's selling out O2 Arena. I was talking to um, Bono uh, from U2 on the phone the other day, and um, he, he invited me to a dinner. He'd done like a big dinner that everybody was invited to, and um, I couldn't come because I was at rehearsal, so he called me. Um, and so he was having a chat for a little bit, and I invited him to the O2 show, and he said, you know, is this, is this, your, is this your second album? And I was like, no, this is my first album. And he was like, bloody heck, like, do you know where we was playing in our first album? you know, touring campaign. And so for me, I think, you know, this is a big statement and we've done extremely well to get here. And I want to make sure that we never, ever go back from this point. It's an incredible feeling and I think it's definitely going to be one of the greatest moments of my life. That's why we have to make sure we get it right. So basically, this is the Discovery rehearsals. This is the big boy rehearsal. We had to travel a couple hundred miles to come up here from London to find a nice secluded and big enough space to be able to do our thing. This is not my first time in arenas. It's my first time in this role in, in arenas, but uh, not my first time in arenas, but I would say this is about as monumental as it gets. Like, this is a second or third album cycle kind of thing. To be here now, where he's at, like, what can I say? It's kind of emotional for everyone. As you can tell, we're all very dressed down, track suits and comfortable Nike shoes. Um, and yeah, we're just knocking right. it out, man. We've got two more days until the official big day, which kicks cool. off in Liverpool. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be carnage still. I can't wait. So um, obviously there's a lot of people come from different vendors here. 
this tour isn't a kind of like a separation of people, this is one tour, everyone's in this tour together. We want to make it a fun experience. Um, first of all, Tiny, who's the uh, man behind the, the name? What's here? I just wanted to quickly just say thank you for you guys um, for obviously having something to do with something that means so much to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the individual things you guys do as well. So just have fun, let your hair down and enjoy yourself. And let's have a great time. Simple. This tour is more important than you can ever imagine. The past 18 months have been tremendous and I feel like this is the this is the this is the way to sort of mark the end of the campaign for the album. I think you know if you go and look back previously a couple of years, you know, people tour albums for this long, uh, when the albums do incredibly well, you know, like the rock bands and stuff. Music has changed a lot more now. Everything is very disposable. So you get one album and you know, even before a year you're onto a next one and onto a whole new campaign. <laughs> I'm fortunate enough as a, as a British rapper to have been able to have a bit of a longer run than that off the back of Discovery. And it's gotten me into like some of the biggest venues in the United Kingdom. So I'm over the moon, I'm overwhelmed, and we are gonna put 100% into it. I even went to the gym, look, I bonked up for it. So we're gonna, we're gonna go hard still, it's gonna be good. I feel like it needs to be brighter. Like more of the white, like yeah, the drum and bass part. Everybody makes up. Yeah, yeah. Hey, my name is Damian Collins. I work as Tiny Stylist, and I've done all of the wardrobe design. Right now, we're in Wakefield. We're at dress rehearsals, and this is the first time that anyone's gonna get to see what Tiny Temper is wearing on his arena tour. Everything with this tour is the continuation of a journey. So one of the things that we did is Tiny wore at Glastonbury, a designer called Christopher Rabin. We turned a very special jacket into an even more incredible jumpsuit. Got this Spider-Man meets Discovery. The back is equally crazy. One of the things that we don't want to do is change how he looks because this is an arena tour. Underneath the jumpsuit, disturbing London clothing, vests, we're going to be working with acid wash black jeans. We have black scoop neck t-shirt, plain black jeans that are going to be cut into denim cutoffs, and then the footwear, most important piece. The initial part of the show is going to be this specially imported from the American US military Nike SFB field boot, one of 50 in the world. SFB, not from the military. If it's quicker, take both shoes off and have another pair waiting for him next to him so the whole thing can come off with these shoes and you can step into another pair. And then the other option is the neon Nikes, which will bust any camera. That would be easier rather than trying to put the same shoe on twice. So bring them and bring them. Let's, let's just open them both up. Try it. Like, I just like... yeah. <laughs> we have one more thing hidden away somewhere. Custom cut and gross, black with neon detail frames. So this backpack represents everything that the Discovery Tour is about. It's meant to replicate in some sort of futuristic way me almost ripping myself out of like a plug socket. You know like when you open up the wires of a plug socket there's loads of different colours. Obviously these are slightly more fluorescent <laughs> and reflective but it's the future isn't it? The reflective details and the lighting is rather than doing light up clothes and light up on the clothing, we wanted lights on the accessories. So this is how we're, this is how we're rolling. Can I wear a hard hat? One, two, three, jump, bang. I one, two, three, bang, bang. Yeah. Wait, wait, high, we got, we higher got than that. Yeah, yeah, just jump. Okay, go on. We go down on three. Yeah. We go down on three. Yeah. Yeah. So just close your eyes and add one, two, three, up, oh, bang. There you go. Perfect. What's in front of you is going to be obvious, but just be aware, especially with, with this on. But just have a look behind you that you're not letting yourself go too far back, back, back on the platform. Down, because, yeah. you know, obviously you've got a hard look. edge, but it's going to have it. So, okay. okay, we're good. Now we're 
allows you to take okay. two inches off that. Yeah. So it's two, three, go. Right, the music. One, two, go. On her next. biggest live space at the moment, the, the best live space, I would say, in England. That's where it's all happening, uh, in the O2. We used to live across the road from it. You could see it from one of our offices in Greenwich. You could see it across the water. From T's house, you can see it across the water. You know, so it's just amazing. It's like, we're like 15 minutes max away. We live 15 minutes maximum away from that venue, man. So we've always been thinking like, wow, the day when you can be in there, you know? For me, I think, you know, this is a big statement and we've done extremely well to get here. And I want to make sure that we never, ever go back from this point unless we want to. Do you know what I mean? If we want to scale down, we can scale down. But I want to know that, you know, after I've done this, you know, for, for the best part of my career, I should and will always be able to do arenas. I've been in so many venues on so many radio tours, even in America, and we always go into these big arenas and there's always catering. And now to have all of that from, from, for me is incredible. Like, you know, we've got from a personal trainer on there to a, a, a wardrobe to a camera crew. And so I kind of like the fact that, you know, there's such a huge team. My name is Ruben uh, and I am Tani's strength and conditioning coach and his nutritionist. I've been training the heavyweight champion of the world, David D. Hay, the haymaker, for the last three and a half years. I first started working with Tiny uh, quite a while ago, like a year ago, um, but it's been sporadic because being the superstar that he is now, he's been traveling all over the world, so it's been kind of hard for us to catch up. The reason why I, I agreed to work with Tiny is because, first of all, he's an amazing person. Uh, he's very intelligent, which is very important. Um, and, and he gets it on a, on, a, on a different level. The more we do this training, the more I realise that you have to be in shape. You have to, like, it's just a natural part of life. There's certain things that we do, when we leave in the day, we're like, how could you not work out in the morning? And it's so important, seriously. Now that I'm on the tour, uh, I, get, I get a greater understanding of how demanding it actually is. Uh, a lot of people would never see uh, what goes on backstage. You know, they just turn up to the performance, he performs, and that's it. But he's going through the show, uh, and it's a very energetic show, traveling from side to side and jumping around and all the rest of it. So he needs a lot of stamina. It's back-to-back -back shows. To be honest, what I'm wearing right now is not the most flattering 
I feel I'm actually a lot more in shape than this. Really? Yes. It's the worst exercise in the world. I need to do that two more times. Two more times. In order to have longevity, he has to look after his body. He has to eat well. Finally, he's had some porridge and water, which he found a little bit disgusting. A little bit. A little bit. It was horrible. It was disgusting. <laughs> and he described it, even though he's never been to prison and never plans on going, he described it as prison food. He tried to put raisins in it. I was like, do you reckon, do you reckon I could get raisins in prison? And Ruben goes, no, <laughs> there's no raisins. No. And he had an omelette with um, turkey, onion... Um... The omelette was good, though. <laughs> I didn't make it. If I was making this porridge, you'd have liked it. But... With the travelling, um, with the performances, with the dress rehearsals, you know, it takes a lot out of you. So if you're not in tip-top shape, then you're gonna, your performances are going to dwindle. And Tiny's a consummate professional, so he wants his performances to be right at the top from start to finish, from the start of the tour to the end of the tour. So that's why he's brought me on board, to make him the best that he can be. How would you describe Tiny? Hard working, sometimes too much hard working on this tour. He literally took the time out to say hello to everybody, like the crew that people don't even acknowledge. He made sure they knew who he was and he knew who they was. Like, there's not a lot of people in the world that do shit like that. Isaac, tell my kids what up when she comes off stage. So she give me a quick one of these. When you come off stage? Yeah, on my face. It just, it just keeps you looking hydrated. All that sweat and all that stuff dries up and just gets irritated. Can't tell what she's got like that. On stage, yeah. I try my best not to do things like that. What? Well, yeah, I know. I know it's bad. I, I even punish myself. I think when I see people sip water and, and towel themselves on stage, it's kind of like it's amateur. Like, like yeah. I, yeah, I, you don't I, I do find the it amateur. It's like mm. it's like you've made people lose concentration. Oh. Like, why should they see you sip water? No. I think <laughs> it makes you. Show. I think it makes you look more like. You're comfortable sure, and you want to give them It depends on the, 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 the kind of story. And whenever I'm reading articles and stuff it all, about performances, it always says with sweat dripping off his face. I don't know if that's a good thing. That like is a good thing. That's some epic shit. giving us something. Yeah. You're meant to sweat. But I don't yeah. think sometimes... Yeah. Tiny eventually wants to get to the stage where he doesn't even sweat. Is that fit? He doesn't sweat. The main thing that my parents instilled in me coming from, you know, where I'd grown up from was the fact that, you know, I'm black and I'm African and because of that, I have to work ten times harder than the white kids in my school or the white kids I was surrounded by and even the Jamaican kids, you know, whose parents had English accents or whatever, you know, they always made that. Uh, and I think, you know, you can fit that into any context you like. And I think that's why I always like mentioning that one. You know, my parents just always, you know, you have to work 10 times harder. If someone's spending an hour to revise, spend two hours just to make sure that you've given it everything that you can because you're not them and you never will be them. We're, we're all from inner city London. And we've all grown up listening to UK Garage like grime, rap, all this kind of stuff, to come in and work with a rapper, which is unheard of in this country, for a rapper to have a live band killing it the way Tiny is. It really has been like a way we've been able to express our roots. Before, I'm sure there was a uh, hopelessness because rap was so bespoke, it was so, um, what do you call it, like streamlined, like you, it, it wasn't a mainstream form of music, but to sit sit there and see Tiny rapping in arenas, even theatres, I mean, it's, it, that's hope for them. They're like, well, if Tiny can do it, I can do it. it it's been done. Before this, it had never been done. I see venues as stripes, you know, I see venues as, as, as say, you're an army cadet, you know, the, 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 the badges, the, the, the stripes on your badge, and, um, that's one hell of a big stripe. So when I found out I'd sold it out, I was like, another one bites the dust. Nice thing to add to the CV. There's not many people that can say that they've done that, especially in my position, especially a black a British rapper with a microphone and a band. And it's, it's incredible. So yeah, I was happy.
so eine. Ja. Okay. Das haben wir bei. I would just like to point out it's 10 to 9, we're only 20 minutes, we're walking in about 3, Josh hasn't showered and has pyjamas on. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, and Guinness come on, slippers. Come on, come on, come on. I'd like to point out oh, that these man, are actually Nigerian man, Guinness. Yes, <laughs> This is pajama rich, okay? Now this oh. is pajama poor. These are from friggin' Primus. Yeah. Yeah. I might just go on stage yeah. like this. Yeah. Oh yeah! I'm going on stage like this. Yeah. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. What my thinking? Yeah. Man, just so I look amazing. Yeah. 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 We're going to a club after this. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know what I think how I got to where I am um boy I'm gonna be I'm gonna be trying to talk about that on the second album a lot which is gonna be fun to be able to convey that into words but I think it's a number of things you know I think at the end of the day the sound that I I almost debuted in mainstream popular music with was an unheard of sound at the time nobody was doing anything like that so that was one thing obviously I definitely think the fact that I was able to you know convey myself and I was quite eloquent and I was able to explain who I was and where I'd come from and what I was about and where I was looking to go um, you know my interviews always made a good read it was always an interesting read I think people were curious to know how there was a, a, a rapper a British black rapper from South London whose songs on the surface were so raw and edgy but when you read an article about him it was an intelligent detailed article and piece of writing and I think people people were quite intrigued about how that was you know when a British rapper comes out people just buy the single and then they don't really follow the artist and follow their career but I think you know me being able to sell out and headline the O2 Arena is testament to the fact that you know the fans stick with you and you actually have a very very big following <laughs> It was absolutely phenomenal. It was the most amazing the best show thing. I've ever seen in my life. that 12 year old kid wanting to be a musician and wanting to be successful fame was definitely something that I was aware of and ready to embrace I'm about to meet and greet the fans Like they were prepared. It's amazing. When you're right. doing signings, you can sequester a lot of Sharpies. Look how many I've kept. <laughs> mm. Don't know why. People just run off and leave their Sharpies behind. There was one Sharpie that was absolutely unbelievable. It's not this one. I think it's this one. It sounds very good. So not all Sharpies are the same. <laughs> Do your hands start aching after a while? Do you know what? No. No. I'm sure. immune to it. Professional yeah. two words. <laughs> when you look at when an American or someone from international, in, someone internationally looks at an artist and says, okay, this guy's cool. What has he done? What is he doing? Where he's from? What kind of ways is he making? For them to be able to switch on a DVD or go on YouTube and look at footage of 18,000 people going crazy in the Ozu Arena, in a way that has not even been done for some of the boy bands. Do you understand? Some of the some of the boy bands and girl groups and other artists that play here regularly, that tour the arenas every year, every two years. I mean, I'm talking pandemonium. I'm so disturbed. Yeah, that's good. Oh Lord, it's good. They're happy, man. That's the most important thing for me. Exactly. But they, they seem like they've had a good they night. They seem like they were bigger fans. They got fans for that. You know that by the side of what you're yeah. saying? Every word. It's too hot! Wow! 
It's really hot, bro. Calvin Harris, you know. His name's Calvin Harris. I see tiny temper. <laughs> I see tiny temper. <laughs> oh my god. I, I see tiny temper. Like, I see tiny temper. <laughs> you just run out there and kick them. Oh, tiny balloons in the window. <laughs> so, what made you get a tattoo of uh, the Starving London logo and the Milk and Two Sugars logo? Because I just like them. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, and because not a lot of people know what they are and everyone thinks that they're really funky, but I really like Tiny Dumbo. Uh -oh. What are you going to do tomorrow? I'm getting that bit that Charlie's just signed on tattooed on, and when Tiny signs it, I'm getting that. So the words, like their autographs, Tiny Temple and DJ Charlie, you're getting that tattooed on. Yeah. Wow. Nice. So you're a big fan. Big, big fan. And when you put the date on me, please. Don't miss the date on it. Like, there. Bro, you guys have never seen that before. I've seen the whole band signatures tattooed on people. The next day. What's the date? After a dungeon. Alright, you've seen it before. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lucy. Um, I run Tiny Street Team, UK Street Team, Tiny Icons. Um, I also am online publisher for Disturb in London, if you didn't know. Um, I go a lot of tiny shows, a lot. Not just in Newcastle, um, London. Uh, Manchester, Leeds, New York, um, I think that's all this year. Oh. I'll have to say I'm not an original fan, I didn't know him from like Tia's days and wifey days. I got introduced to him, ra well, round about the pass out days um, by my friend, she sent us his video and then I just looked him up on YouTube and then I found all his videos and then just watched them all from then. Feeling the same. Have you got pens? Oh, I love him, he's so cute. Just lovely. Even if I don't get to see him very often, like tonight, meet and greet, I'll probably only see him for a second, but he'll say hello, Lucy, and then I'll be like, hi, can you take your glasses off? Because I hate his glasses. Uh, hopefully, he'll take them off, but he doesn't always agree to it. Uh, but yeah, it should be good. Am I allowed to call you Louis? Like L O O? How would I spell it? However you want. Like, but you spell your name in loads of different Yeah, but it's just, just spell however you want. What's your favourite song to play? My favourite song to play right now? Woo! It's got to be Frisky, boy. Frisky is just. Frisky feels monstrous. Like when we was in the studio, like me and Wes, like doing all the programming and stuff. Like there's this part where we, when, we, when the band played, they play ba ba bill, and then there's this bomb that comes out of nowhere, and it feels like a slap in the face. Like it just feels like. <laughs>
throwing a basketball and you were yeah. throwing it above your head. That seemed like a metaphor to your whole entire career. Are you a believer in the power of the mind and and what you can actually accomplish when you see it before you even do it? Um, I'm, I'm, in terms of what you just said about you know being a believer of of how powerful the mind is and the fact that the mind can make a lot of things happen, um, I'm a firm believer of that. Like I believe that that is like forty percent of all of it. That day when I did the basketball thing, I knew in my head that if I kept trying to do it, it would definitely go in. I just stood in a particular place and I was like, if I carry on trying this, it's going to go in. Yes. And, I, and I believe that if you believe in something 100% and wholeheartedly, it can happen. Cameras watching, like I could have bailed out because I thought, let me not stand here for the next hour trying to do it. But I just knew that if I did it, it would happen. And I just think, you know, with my career and with the fact that I almost have four months to complete what has to be an even better album than Discovery, like I know I'm gonna do it. Like I'm gonna be alright. It'll be, it'll be fun. When it comes to birthdays, I had a conversation with somebody about birthdays before and parties and that. 
and they said, oh, you know, I'm having a huge birthday party. <coughs> Everyone's going to make a fuss. I don't know whether I'm up for it. And my thing is, yeah, there is nothing better than on your birthday to be doing what you love and to be around the people you love. You guys have honestly made from the age of like 20, 19, 20 to 23, incredible. Let's just hope from 23 to 30 is even better. Well, today is a big day. Not only that time he's doing Manchester Men, M-E-N Arena, it's his 23rd birthday. So we're gonna get drunk, because it's Big T's birthday. He's 23 years old today. It was so funny, I remember when he was 16 and he used to ask me to come out to under over 18s, and he was, he was a baby then. And now he's 23, he can drink in America, can basically do everything. He can have some babies. Come, let's go and fuck it up. Burn them! Come Best manager in the world, that's my brother, Ride or Die. I don't even know what camera I'm looking at <laughs> right now. He bought me, this is the only watch I've ever wanted, I swear to God. Thank you so much, bro. Come. Thank Trust you so me. much. I'm proud of you. Yeah, that's <laughs> love, right there. Yeah. Well, I'm my, my number one artist, obviously, the person that I first invested my time into and my knowledge into, and he's got to hear. He's my cousin, he's my blood, my best friend. He's like, that's my guy right there. Like, we've got a great thing. And I'm just hopefully he appreciates that. It's more than material things, but I hope but by his side when he does, he continues reaching on his goals, man. But I'm proud of the kid.
Make a wish for us. Make a wish now. Come on. Do you know what? I'll do my wish for all of you guys. Be careful. Okay, so right now we're at Blue Water, which was uh, originally my local shopping centre. So um, I used to live not too far from here, about half an hour down the road. And um, this is the biggest shopping centre around here that I used to come to. So I'm here today to do my first book signing uh, for my new book that I got out of my story so far at the local Waterstone. So it should be kind of cool. My name's Kelly Ellis and I am Tiny Tempest editor. It was back in 2010, I'd been following the whole like, year and I could just see how things were taking off so, so quickly and with really good reason. Because he's someone with a story that is just going to inspire young kids. So I approached Tiny and uh, thankfully he thought it was a good idea too. Oh, guys, my eyes are stinging. <laughs> Where do you want to sign on? In the hair or on the yeah. picture of you? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So they could do the name there and mm -hmm. then sign it. So cool. they'll stick a post and no hair with the oh, name before. they want before. So Amazing. Just so yeah, that's spell perfect. Spell it out yeah, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got, we know exactly the number in the queue, so if you're happy to do like up to two hours, it, it no should be between an hour and two hours, and then Richard, he drove you here, I'll take you back home. That's that was brilliant. Cool. Good um, day's work. The whole concept behind the book was, you know, it, it sort of initially started off as an autobiography type book, um, and then I just, I just thought, you know, at the end of the day, I'm 22, I'm still kind of young, and you know, still hopefully, fingers crossed, at a very early stage in my career. So why don't I make something that's more scrapbooky, if that's even a word? Um, so we just basically went, you know, we went back a little bit with the help of my mom and my sister and some, some others, um, but mostly we went back over the past 18 months. You know, within myself, my DJ Charlesy, my manager Dummy, um, and we just looked at all the pictures that we'd collected um, over the past 18 months and all the phenomenal places we'd been from like New York, New Zealand. Edinburgh, everywhere, like it was in insane. So after getting up all these pictures, I basically did little an anecdotes around all the pictures, and that is basically what the book is made up of. Should we go through these books? Yeah, yeah. Saw in the yeah. I think I think the fact that it was my local had a lot of sentiment to it. I mean, I'm very about that. You know, if I'm if I'm bringing something out that tells a little bit about my story and where I've come from, I think it's only right that I do it somewhere where I used to visit when I was a little bit younger. <laughs> no, I hope you don't get RSI or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'll be alright. I said in the camera as well, uh, even when I met the, the security guard that works for Blue Water, it was very surreal because this is where I used to come. Like, with no <laughs> money on the 96 bus and just like look around. So it's really crazy. It's nice. And then obviously, same with the O2 as well. Like on both ends, there's a lot of my local. I live right in the middle of that. So, yeah. Are you happy with it? I'm very happy with it. I like the pictures. Yeah. That's what a lot of people are going to like, you know? Yeah. Help, I mean, where did you get all the childhood stuff from? Is that what your mum had in her drawers? Of course, yeah. She's good, she's good with all of that. She's still got tons more for anything else I do in the future. I think it definitely hits home for a lot of people. I feel like there's a lot of support coming from this particular area in terms of like, you know, where I grew up and all the local areas surrounding it. So it's only right I go back there first, you know? So now we're at this book signing and um, I'm going to sign as many books as I can in two hours. So thanks to everyone who came out here. Peace and love. Been dreaming this since I was young, so baby girl, I'll be going till I'm gone, gone, till I'm gone, gone, till I'm gone, gone. Yeah. I buy time in Switzerland, I drive around in Monaco, uh -huh. I shook hands with royalty, I make songs that monarchs know. Uh -huh. T T T La Sofa, yeah. me, 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 Ray Doe. Call me Aloe Black, cause I need that dollar, yo. <laughs> hick, 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 
Blame me on the liquor. I came through like a stick up. Now I'm ballin' like a kick up. I'll be cutting off these bitches like an episode of Nick's up. I guess I am the best man. I'm so sorry about the mix. Come out and play. Pour out another bottle. Let's do it all today and worry about it all tomorrow. I do it for the thrill. You know I love the rush. And once you get me going, I can never get enough. You know that I know that you know that I know that it's like that. Well gone. Well gone, Henry. Well gone, Henry. You see this box? This is all the shit that, like, fans, or all the stuff I've managed to keep, like memorabilia and stuff that fans have ever got me, or like all the things I've ever done from before. So, like, when I've done the late show and, um, when I've done a, a MLB and everything, I keep everything here. I've got like when I sold out uh, my first tour, everything. I keep everything in here. Last question is not really a question. It is uh, your chance to say whatever you want to Tiny Man when he watches this film back. This is your uh, your moment right here. Oh, what am I gonna say to Tiny? Um, you're a star, and everything's only gonna go up, and you're gonna get bigger and better recognised all over the world, and you deserve it. I'm a believer that things happen for a reason. Everything seems to be falling into place for you, and it must be for a reason. Stay likeable. I don't know a person that doesn't like you, and that says a lot to me. Um, that's from crew right up to management, to labour, whatever. People enjoy being around you, and you don't make people feel like they have to be special to be around you, and that in itself is a talent. That means you can manage this whole thing, and you have been doing extremely well. So, um, dude, man, um, the only way is up. And if this is only the beginning, jeez. A lot of the flats are still in, um, are still in Dummy's office because I haven't moved into like my proper house yet. So I don't want to get too comfortable. But there's like a lot. There's a lot of shit here, man. Um, this is a fucking awesome painting that someone drew of me as well. This is like the first bit of art that somebody made for me, which I thought was fucking really, really cool. Um, then there's like little things, like, like even like letters from like fans and stuff. For the second album, I'm still feeling very inspired. Like, I'm not gonna lie, there was a time when the first album was finished and I was doing promo in America where I wasn't inspired for the second album, but thankfully, the inspiration has all come back for the second album. But and I know every artist goes through it. When it gets to that time and place where I'm not inspired, I'm frustrated, I don't know what I want to do, I'm going to open all these letters, all of them, and I'm going to read every single letter, and I think that's just going to give me exactly what I need. Thank you. I've made some amazing friends from being a fan of yours. Um, you've also probably helped us through stuff that you probably don't even know about. Um, and thanks for making it really easy to annoy me, ma'am. Because she, although she does like your music, she can, I mean, once she's heard one song like 200 times, one after the other, it does get a bit repetitive. But thanks for that, because uh, ease makes my job easy. I love you, Tiny. We love you, you're you sort of true really inspiration, and you make us Can we go on? Yes. We love you. This is a really kind of like cool trendy magazine. This is like the first cover I ever done. Like some cool shit. Like you know, like even even um, what's this? Yeah, like you know, like when they send you suits and stuff. Like the little notes. Like dear tiny, here's a suit. Thank you. Da da da. -da all that kind of shit. I keep all this kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. Cheers for me having me on board and stuff. And you know, really kind of for me coming from you know, the valleys in Wales, I guess, and, you know, coming onto something this big. Obviously, I've done gigs and stuff like this before, we're, but this is kind of the biggest one I've ever done, really, and I just want to say, like, yeah, man, cheers for letting me live the dream. Keep doing your thing, run your flex. It's distilled London, man. Keep doing your thing. You're the man right now. Kill it. Yeah. I'm going to say this is my favourite so far. It's even got all the lyrics well, not all the lyrics, but it's got a whole bunch of my lyrics, even from my first ever rap. Like, my first ever rap that was good enough for people to hear, which was still very, very shit. So, you know. And I like the fact that people are really associating the two things, the Tiny Temper and Disturbing London. It's always, it's always good. Do you know what I mean? Always good. 
I just want to thank him for just being the most brilliant author that I've worked with so far. Um, he's just so intelligent, so insightful, so creative, and he's just everything you could wish for, and all the best with the shows. A lot of these letters are birthday letters, actually. Oh, maybe, oh, I don't know. Cups. They could have put black arms on this, but I'm not fussy. It's fine. It's cool. It's really nice. Don't lose your head, and don't lose your heart, and don't lose who you are, and don't lose, like, the way that you respond or treat people, you know? It's very nice the way you treat people right now, you know? And the bigger you get, the more kind of out of contact maybe you'll be with people because you just be so busy or you just want a bit of me time. But when you do see us, still come and holler, you know, whether I'm still playing with you or not, or whatever, you're always gonna be my brother, my baby brother. You and Lab, man, like, you two are one of a kind, man, like, and I really respect what you're doing. And yeah, man, keep, keep going. And anytime you read this, there's always, like, people that say things exactly from the heart. Someone even made me, this is another cool thing I've never really got to look at. Someone even made me my own book, like, their own version of my book, with all the pictures they'd got, which was kind of cool. To Tiny, I would say good looking on the opportunity just to even come out here and, and touch your fans. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times I've been opening up for people for a minute. Like, I'm, I'm not, I don't have an ego about it. Like, so I've been doing it for a while. I opened up for Jay, I opened up for Drake in Europe, I opened up for Rihanna. So a lot of times, you know, especially when I was opening up for Jay, as an opener, you come in like when people are still filing in. One thing about this tour is like every time I went on, Almost every time, this place has already been packed. You know what I'm saying? They don't put me all the way to be in, like, you know, so I appreciate the opportunity. Wish you the best of luck on your whole career. You know, you're gonna continue to kill over here. And, and congratulations on your success in the States. I know it's more to come. You know, I know a lot of people from over here been trying to make that transition, especially in hip hop. So it look like you're gonna be the first to really do it. So that's, you know, that's incredible, incredible feat. Tiny was cruising down Beverly Hills in his Lamborghini singing along to Wonder Man. Didn't do that, don't have a Lamborghini, so I'm guessing it's like a fictional story. Um, Cheryl Cole happens to be walking down, Tiny looked to his left wing mirror and said, I think my reflection is relatively jealous of me. When Cheryl saw him, he was hoping he wouldn't get hassled, so it's all like lyrics from the album. He was hoping he wouldn't get hassled, so he put on his Ray-Ban and did a U-turn off to Hollywood and said, let's go. On his arrival, he was given a fucking clap that was his encore, but it began to rain, so Tony ran to his aunt's house to get an umbrella. When he came back out, the rain stopped and he sang, let it rain. Uh, that's kind of cool, I'm gonna read that. Wait, just keep on doing what you're doing, man, and keep on just believing, believing in everything. Keep on dreaming and let, let us keep on having those dreams and, the, and uh, keep on thinking big and trust me, bro, you know, like, we can just take over the world and disturb the globe. So just keep on believing, keep on working hard, and I got you, man. I can't wait that. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to get to where I am at the minute. Hopefully we both grow and be bigger and bigger. And I can't really thank him. I can't thank him enough for what he's done for me. Respect. Respect. When you watch this film like, and you're reminiscing on your career, uh, what would you Tiny Temple, a 23-year-old man, like to say to yourself when you're watching this back in 10 years? You know, 10 years from now, I want to be, be sorted and I want to be doing things that are still challenging um, the perception of, of, of independent black businessmen and, you know, people that, you know, make black music and, and how influential black music is. When you woke up this morning, did you see the... Um... Did you know that your your sign? No, I haven't seen the sign yet. You haven't seen this outside? Is it there? Come on. I want to have done some amazing things. I want I want the following year to be looking even more brighter than the previous one, you know, and that's basically what I hope for. And I just want this 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 film to be a constant reminder of how long it's been exciting for, you know. I 
think that's pretty much it, you know. Oh, that's fucked. Yeah, that's the shit right there. I need to take a picture of that. Ladies and gentlemen, in name Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I don't know if these two things go together. They don't fight. They don't fight. All I want is for God to bless us today in every way we do. Hold on, sir. Give us the stamina. Give us the. Give us the set. Give us the excitement. Tell them, tell them. The best show we have ever done. Let's get boys. Tell them, tell them. Swinging in the backyard, pull up in your fast car, whistling my name. Open up a beer and you say, get over here and play a video game. I'm in his favorite sundress, watching me get undressed, take that body downtown. I say you the bestest, leaning for a big kiss, put his favorite perfume on, go play a video game. It's you, it's you, it's all for you, everything I do, I tell you all the time, heaven is a place on Kissing in the blue dark, playing pool and wild dots, video games. He holds me in his big arms, drunk and I am seeing stars, this is all I think of. Watching all our friends fall in and out of old clothes, this is my idea of fun, playing video games. It's you, it's you, it's all.